Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint an ocean sunset with a wave. Uh, it should be fairly, mm, maybe medium difficulty. Uh, I've got my husband Mark with me today. Hey there, everybody. He's going to be man and chat for us during our live show. And this is our Patreon bonus show. So thanks for joining us, those patrons that are watching today live. And uh, let's get started. All right, so this is my reference photo. Uh, this actually printed out a little bit uh, more orange than the original did. Uh, but uh, I think I'm going to change it up just a little bit, maybe crop it slightly so that the wave is a little bit bigger and takes up more of our um, focal point. And uh, I also wanted a little bit more of this kind of uh, roll in the wave. So I found this reference photo. Uh, of course, it's not the same exact perspective, uh, but or colors at all <laughs> but at least we'll kind of get the shapes that we're looking for and I'm going to put that like right here in the middle um, so well, let's get started I've got a 9 by 12 inch uh, canvas panel uh, this is a linen board um, linen panel so it's a little bit smoother than a regular canvas I, I really like these um, for painting on if you can find them <clears throat> let's go over our palette really quick we've got uh, burnt umber Burnt Sienna, Unbleached Titanium, Titanium White, Quinacridone Magenta, Cadmium Red Light, Cadmium Yellow Light, Cadmium Yellow Medium, Yellow Oxide, Thalo Green, Yellow Shade. Uh, this is uh, Thalo Turquoise, Thalo Blue Green Shade, and Ultramarine Blue. Now if you don't have Thalo Turquoise, you can just mix these two, Thalo Blue and Thalo Green together to get a similar color. And... Uh, That'll be our main, that's why I put that out there because we're going to be using this turquoise color quite a bit in this painting since we've got so much yellow in the sky. So I figured we'll just go ahead and have it pre-mixed. Yellow in the sky. <laughs> oh, sorry. Was my mic on there? Wrong song. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good try. Though. I'll start working on a new career. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So welcome, if I haven't said that already, I think I did at the beginning, but uh, we're so glad to have you guys join us, and we so appreciate your uh, helping our channel, and uh, if you're watching with us live today, we uh, are doing a giveaway. Um, we draw drew names from our patrons this morning, and uh, we met our goal uh, this month, so our as a thank you gift, we were going to uh, give away a painting. So... Um, we drew names this morning, and our winner was Jewel Bunning. Yep, Jewel Bunning. So uh, she'll be getting a choice of a few paintings here. I've got, I pulled out a few. Um, so we've got that one, that one, that one, that one. Probably those noises are not great. That one or that one. Those are. Van Gogh one. So she can choose from those as a thank you for those who helped us get to our goal on Patreon. And uh, next month we'll probably be giving up another painting. We'll try to do one a month. So congratulations to Jewel. Let's get started here. All right. So I'm going to um, split this into thirds. So I'm just going to put a straight line right across with the ruler because I want it nice and straight. For our horizon line, you really can't see that very much, but let me do it a little bit darker. Just making sure if you've got a T-square, you can probably use that instead. There, I'll press a little harder so you can see it. There we go. Now you can see it. That doesn't look even to me. I've got my T-square and make sure that I got that. Yeah, you got to make sure that ruler is... No, it's not. Oh, look at it. man. <laughs> Did you do... I don't know. I probably... I've been abusing my rulers, so there's no telling. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Note to self, use T-square. Well, I was setting it up against here, so this may not be perfectly straight. All right, and then I'm going to come down just a little bit for our wave, but really we're not seeing a whole lot of this back area of um, our water. So I'm going to kind of do a line, um, maybe one finger's width down from the top. It's coming down a little bit more on this side. And it's going to crest right in the middle there. And I'm going to grab this picture because I want 
So I want this little area to be the tallest area and then, so we'll do it like there and we'll have that, this part coming down right about here. And then it kind of goes straight right here and then it dips back up and comes down like that and then off. And this sort of does like that. Can you see that? Okay. So really just kind of finding that main large, I think I might move it over a little bit so that that part that's dipping down is right in the middle, maybe a little bit wider. We can really kind of play with it a little bit since we sort of know the basic shapes. We can make this as big or as little as we want <clears throat> in here. And then, yeah, I think that's good. And then we're going to taper it down. There's some more. Actually, this on this side is going to come down like this. And there's some, like, spray there. And there's some rolling foam down in here. And a nice big area of rolling foam right there. Okay, so that's our main background part of our wave. We're going to kind of come off to the side, come up a little bit, and then straight down, and then up again a little bit, and then taper back down like that. All right. This part back here where the sky meets the water is always going to be completely straight. If this part was, if our perspective was a little bit lower and we weren't seeing the horizon line, we were only seeing the wave, then we could have our wave, you know, be uh, wavy or like our horizon line be wavy because we would be seeing actually the wave in front of this, if that makes sense. But because we're seeing a little bit of that horizon line, we want to make sure that that's completely straight. All right, because it's so far away. And then this, most of this bottom area is just going to be some random um, sea foam and things. So we're not going to really have to worry too much about it. I think I'm going to bring this down a little bit more right here. Okay, I think that's good. So not a whole lot of drawing for it. Not too bad. Let's start with the sky. We'll go put in our sky first with our large flat brush. And I'm going to grab some white, a little bit of that cadmium yellow light. It's going to be my sun color. And I'm going to go ahead and put it right kind of below this main or right above this main wave here, maybe just slightly off center. And I'm going to just pull out. Kind of like me. Do I need to? Do something? No, I just say kind of like me. A little off center. <laughs> like you. Okay. I missed that. Sorry. That's okay. It's Sunday. It is. I feel a little bit off my game today. Just being a different day and all. All right. Grabbing a little bit of the straight cadmium yellow light. I'm going to kind of work in some sort of cloud like dabs into that wet paint there and kind of pull it out and around. And that blue is getting into my sky for my chalk, so I'm going to have to clean that up. That's the joy of using colored chalk. It actually does kind of interact with your paints a little bit. All right, I'm going to grab some white and a little bit of this cadmium red light. And then I'm going to grab some of the cadmium red medium or cadmium yellow medium. Cadmium red light, cadmium yellow medium. It's going to make this kind of orangey gold color here. We'll use that in, I'm going to just use the corner of my brush and just kind of tap lightly into this wet paint. So it's still wet here. And I'm just, and you can do this if it's dried already too. So don't worry about that too much. I'm going to go ahead and run, run it across here. And right up into the corner. 
corner. Maybe put a few of these in here, just touching the corner of my brush to kind of add a little bit of cloud to it. You ready for some questions? Yes. Okay. Um, let me see if I can find it here. I'm going to do the same thing on this side and just kind of tap in to this wet. This paint is still slightly wet, so... Okay, Marcy would like Marcy would like to know if it would be possible to use like a modeling paste or fibers in the waves. Oh yeah, that that'd be cool. Foamy. Yeah, absolutely. Action-y. Yeah, I would. Um, I would probably figure out, you know, draw it out really well first, and then use your um, tool or whatever it is that you're doing. And um, well, you could do it two ways. You could either you can actually mix your paint into those mediums usually. So you could put it on um, with the paint color already mixed in and just, you know, let it be what it is. Or you can put the texture on first and then paint over it. So just whatever you want to do there. But yeah, that would be cool. All right, so this is a little bit of the quinacridone magenta and I'm just going to kind of Pull lightly and just slightly feathering it up upwards as I tap. These clouds are kind of coming in at a slight angle this way from either, either side. So I'm sort of pointing them down toward the middle here. So I'm going to, and if this is starting to dry and getting, getting sticky um, and starting to lift, you, you know, just let it dry completely before you keep going with this. But I'm not going to put a ton of work into the sky because this main focal point is going to be our wave, but I do want to give it a little bit of attention. It's so pretty. All right, let's see. I'm going to grab some of the straight cadmium yellow medium here, and I'm going to come in and create some clouds closer to our sun. There's some really bright clouds that are it's starting to get a little bit sticky so I might have to add a little bit of water and I'm kind of looking at uh, the bottom of the clouds or right up underneath these areas and then I'm going to be putting this white stuff over the top. So right now I'm kind of trying to get some yellow in, some of this yellow in, in some of these irregular shapes. And they're really kind of almost horizontal little lines that are all stacked up next to each other. I'll grab some white, mix that in. Blend that out a little bit. Okay, just kind of blending it in. Let's grab some more of that white now. And I still have these other colors on my brush, so it's just going to kind of be sort of a slightly off-white color. And I think I want to switch to a smaller brush now because I'm starting to get into some more of the details. So I'm going to grab my Filbert. This is my number four Filbert. Grab the white. And I'm going to brighten up that one area right here and create that sort of star or the diagonal flare that's happening right there. Grab a little bit of that cadmium yellow light, add a little bit of that through. Right, grab 
with some more of that white. And kind of pull in a sun shape sort of radiate lines out from that center. Got another question? Yeah. Shady would like to know if one could do this sky the Bob Ross way with a large brush and various yellows. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so she could paint like a Ross? Yeah, she could paint like a Ross. Um, you know, if you're doing it with a larger brush, uh, you know, you, he, he used the the large, like one of these kind of brushes and then use the corner almost like a stippler, you know, so you would get in here with, I'm going to grab some little white with it and show you. So he would use it and just kind of tap in some of these cloud shapes and that's, you know, it works pretty well. It works just like one of these brushes would. Um, but he also, one, one thing that he did do that, that makes it a little bit more difficult with acrylics is he would, you know, put on a color and then come back later and, and like get a little bit of a, well, in our case would be water, but in his case, I think it was some sort of thinner and he would blend back over, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And you can only do that while that paint is still wet with acrylic. So what you'd have to do is kind of work in small sections to get that effect. So, you know, do a small section of the clouds and then come in immediately with your brush and blend it out to get a softer look. So I'm going to work on that because I kind of like how that's looking. Thanks, Shady. So we'll just... But it kind of helps if it's a stiff bristled brush um, so that it can push that paint around. You know, or you could use a mop too. I know I've seen people use mops too. Those are they're those are very soft. Um, so you, if you're using a thinner paint, they would work a little bit better. But with the heavy body acrylics, I find that using a thick, um, sturdier brush works better because it just it moves the paint a little bit easier. You just have to make sure you clean it out real well so you don't get paint all over your floor later on. I don't know what you're saying there. Sorry, I missed that. Well, he said you could use a mop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess with me today. <laughs> oh, but this is the fun, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All righty. I think that looks good. I'm going to go back in and wash some blue up here in the corners, but I'm going to start working on our seascape first. We'll come back to that once that's completely dry. But really the key to getting that glow is to make sure that you're almost pure white right there and that you have some other colors around it that are um, just slightly darker so that uh, you can see that kind of contrast. And that's what makes it look like it's kind of popping off the canvas like that. All right, so I'm going to use the same kind of yellow here because basically the water down here kind of acts like a mirror. The flat part of the water is reflecting that light back up. So it's really um, going to be very similar to what you're seeing in the sky. And this is all going to have to go. I'm going to have to use my white here. Try to cover up that horizon line chalk. White's one of the best cover up colors. It's super opaque. The titanium white is so it's just a good go to color if you want to cover something. All right, so that'll be good. And there's, there is some blue back here, so I'm going to grab the white and a little bit of this thalo blue and just a teeny tiny bit of it, and that's way too much there. I mean, even just the tiniest little bit, it's so potent. I'm going to use that. 
Kind of go back and forth right along that horizon line there. Create a soft blue color back there. And you can have streaks in this, this is fine. It's actually pretty close to that chalk color too, so that helps blend it in. I'm going to grab a little bit of the Burnt Sienna, mix that with my Thalo Blue and White. And then I'm going to use it over here, this area over here is a little bit darker. I'm going to be sure that I get that straight. Cashmere trying to get in? I think so. Cat's trying to get in here in the studio. She's missing out. All right. I grabbed a little bit of white so that I've got a lighter color that's kind of blending this in slightly. And I'm keeping these lines fairly horizontal back here. Not going to really see the waves much as they get this far away. Add a little bit of this darker color up in here. The farther away we get from our sun, it's going to get darker and darker. So we're just kind of leaving the light part in the middle. Grabbing some more white there. Okay, so now we're getting kind of closer to the backside of our wave there. I'm going to get a little bit more of the brighter thalo blue. Mix that in. And we've got a little bit of that right back in here, kind of behind the wave. And I'm doing a little bit bigger strokes now. And blending those in and then we'll do some back in here too I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my brush because it's getting a little bit dry and I want it to get down into the cracks of that canvas so if it's skipping along the top of it like it was doing there I just need a little bit more water Most of it off, grab some more white, and I'm going to grab my cadmium yellow light, and mix those together. I've got the little bit of blue in there, so that'll kind of create this green color. And that is going to be part of this wave here, coming down this way. Let's use some of this color up down in here. So we're just going to kind of create some small little, we're kind of creating these little cupped shapes for our foreground here. We're going to have lots of colors in here, so this is just going to be one of the colors that we're seeing. Might as well use it down here while we've got it on our brush. All right, let's grab some of that blue. 
that we used up here, and we'll use some of that down here too. And really here, I'm just kind of trying to get this covered. I'm not worried too much about the shapes, although I am kind of paying attention to the direction that these waves are happening so that if any of these brush strokes show later, they'll make a little bit of sense. So they're kind of angling this way slightly. And now let's grab a little bit of this ultramarine blue and mix that in. And we'll use that in the corner here. It's going to be even darker than that. Let's grab a little bit more. This area is nice and dark down here. And let's put some in this corner too. We're going to have all this sea foam and all kinds of stuff on top of here. So this is just going to be kind of our ugly layer that's underneath all of our other colors. But we're just, what I do, you know, when I'm trying to figure out the colors is I try to see what some of these main colors are underneath all of this stuff. I try to ignore all this stuff that's laying on top and look down through and see kind of what's underneath. So that's what I was trying to do with this one. Seeing a little bit of blue, a little bit of purpley blue in these corners and a little bit more of the green blues in the middle. So that's what we're kind of working towards. And grab some white and some of this I Love Blue mixture. Still got that Ultramarine on my brush, so it's going to kind of all mix together. And this area in the middle here, right from our sun, right, is going to be a little bit lighter than these areas back here in the corners. And then there's a nice big shadow that's going to happen right here underneath our wave where uh, it's blocking the sun and we're seeing darker colors so grab some more of that phthalo blue and white and we'll put some of that up under here this is probably a lot brighter than we want it but some of it in here. Add a little bit of water. It's just leaving a lot of these white spots. So I want to fill all of that in. And a little bit of water to my brush will help. So you're adding water to your water. Interesting. I am adding water to my water, yes. <laughs> All right, let's start grabbing some of this turquoise too here. Mix that in. Most of this area is going to be white-ish, so I'm going to leave that for now. I will put some color underneath there, but it'll be more like a blue to go against that white. It's not actually pure white. It's more of a, like a purpley blue in our shadow in those wave parts. All right, just filling this all in. I probably could have used a bigger brush at this point. <laughs> and this is this is the point where we're going to start doubting what we're doing so stick with me because this is going to look pretty bad here until we get it better all right I'll, this is some phthalo green mixed in i'm going to get some of that color worked in here around these sides Oh, 
And these lines are kind of coming this way. So they're kind of all converging like right in here where this wave is, I guess, pulling the water in. So this, this is kind of coming in this direction diagonally up this way. And these ones were kind of coming this way. Okay, here we go. Got most of that covered now. Mix a little bit of burnt umber with my ultramarine blue, create that kind of blue gray, but I'm going more blue than gray with it. And I'm going to come in here and really add a nice, really dark pop of color over our waves here. And this time I'm not covering it completely, so we've got these other colors underneath here. So I'm just adding a little bit of this color, add a little bit of water so that it's going to be visible. There we go. Create some darkened areas. So I'm kind of doing a dark line all the way across like this, leaving a little bit of lighter color right here, and then a little bit darker again right in here. And here it's just this kind of swish, swishy motion that I'm doing with my brush. It's not just kind of like a soft back and forth. add some of this dark color up in here. Really dark. And the dark area is going to come down to about right here. So this whole area is going to get pretty dark. underneath where we're going to put our splash because we need that shadow underneath it before, before we put our white on top. Okay. It's getting really weird, but <laughs> it's actually getting there. <laughs> Let's grab some thalo green, a little bit of burnt sienna. The burnt sienna just kind of tones it down, makes it a little bit less in your face green. A little bit, as Ginger Cook calls it, not less circus color green. And very rarely are we using the greens or you know any of the colors straight out of the tube. I was kind of changing them a little bit subtly. So let's pull some of this green up in here. I'm going to go over the top of some of those wave areas, add some in in between. It's these lines that are pulling in this way. All right, then let's use some of that color. Maybe add a little 
bit of the turquoise to it. There we go. I'm going to use it right here at the top of that way where it's cresting. We're seeing a lot of green in this wave because the light's shining through it. So you're you're seeing more of the green color of the water and the light reflecting in through the blue of the water, making it look kind of green. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this color all the way down here, you know. some of that ultramarine blue because this is really kind of more ultramarine on this side. There we go. Most of this is going to be covered, but we just need this darker color underneath for our lighter waves to show up. Let's put some of this color up over here too. So now I, I still want to go a little bit darker, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my turquoise here. And pull in. Some lines. I'm going to create kind of a crest right here. So these two are going to kind of make this sort of v-shape so i'm going to kind of do like that really dark underneath here hey uh can you make this look a little harder look a little bit harder yeah <laughs> why are you yeah, there's some people in chat complaining you make it look too easy. Make it look too easy. <laughs> so go ahead and paint with your left hand. I I feel like I need to today. My arm's killing me. <laughs> After yesterday. Maybe hold a brush with your teeth or something. Okay. I'm going to add... Actually, I think I'm going to get some... Oh, yeah. uh, glazing liquid. Forgot to put some out here. <clears throat> I'm going to grab the turquoise and white. And I'm going to go in here with this thinned out turquoise now. Create some more lines in this color, in this area back here. If it's not showing up, then just um, either add a, a little bit darker color, like a little bit of the ultramarine blue or something like that to it, or you can lighten up the background a little bit. This is this is working because the background's a little bit light enough for you to see these this color on top. So just need a little contrast. So just make sure that. 
you know, your color underneath is, or that's showing up against the color underneath. And then I'm just going to create some of these shapes. Again, just kind of doing these little back and forth. Try to stack them so that um, do one this way and one underneath and then one like that and then one like that so that they are kind of stair-stepping each other. They're not all in a line like that. Um, you want them to kind of weave in and out of each other. So looks a little bit more natural. And I'm just kind of lightly blending as I go to. Making sure that I get any of these spots that are still kind of white, working some of that color into those areas. Making sure my canvas is covered. Okay, and let's keep on going. I just want to kind of soften this transition between these two colors, although there's going to be kind of some sea foam here that'll help break it up, but I do want to kind of add some of this color down in here. And these lines are sort of coming this way, so I'm sort of angling them up sort of overlapping lines so that they're creating some movement. Is this your number four filbert still? Yes. Yes. And really I'm going to use this for most of this painting. This is going to be the main brush that I use. Right, there's a little bit of this color down in here. Create some kind of lines again. These time, this time I'm kind of going this way. Really all of these lines are sort of going horizontal this way, kind of working their way up. They're sort of stacking in lines this way, up this way. I think I said this way like five times there. Sorry. <clears throat> so which way? <laughs> this way. This way? <laughs> Not that way. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to grab some white. And now I want to just kind of blend out this back area here a little bit. So I'm going to use that white to sort of soften up that area behind my wave. Make sure that that looks nice and blended. Grab some blazing liquid and some white. And I'm going to create some little lines in that to make it look like some small waves back in here. I need to go that high. the white, a little bit of my yellow, cadmium yellow light, brush off the extra and I'm going to go back in here and clean up this line here. Just make sure I have a nice straight line right there. And then we'll use a little bit of this yellow, we'll start using this yellow in our water now that we've got kind of most of our blue in there. 
start adding this yellow. So I'm going to use my brush and kind of lightly side to side create some small lines in my water back here. And they're going to come all the way out this way. So I'm keeping them very small back here, very thin using that edge of my brush to create some thin lines in that water, creating that glow back here. And it's almost, you really almost can't see the difference between the yellow and the white right here where they, where they meet right at the top of the horizon line. They're almost the same color. And keep these waves very, very, very small, very thin lines back here. So you're really not going to see any wave waves like we see as we get closer. Keep these lines very small and close together. All right. white and cadmium yellow light here and then we're going to start over here and add in some some of our highlights on top of our waves so I'm going to use the edge of this brush and create little why don't you zoom in hun on this part be easier to it'll go there on me. So, okay. I'm going to create small little ripples with the edge of this brush and I'm going to do them in some sort of lines but not I don't want a, a solid line across so I'm just going to kind of tap to create some lines in the water leading towards this main wave there. Tapping lightly in. I'm still kind of gently rocking my brush too so that I'm getting these kind of curved soft lines. A little bit more white, a little bit more of the cadmium yellow light. And I'm going to go back over again. Now, that first time was kind of transparent color. So this time I'm going with more thick color. I'm going to go and hit the tops of those waves. So kind of just right at the top on just a few of them. I don't want to do all of them because it will overpower it. But I do want to kind of brighten up a few of those. This is one that you're really going to have to kind of trust the uh, trust the process because it's going to look really weird at first. You're, uh, you know, it might not look quite right when you first put it on there, but the more layers that you put in, the better it'll get. And if anything is too like obvious and too bright, we can always go back in and darken it up a little bit again. So right now we're just kind of laying some highlight colors on and we're going to soften them up later if we need to. So don't worry too much about getting this too dark or too bright, I mean, at this point. All right, now I'm going to start kind of working it in this direction. Some of these are going to start to kind of form lines across this way. Oops kind of mimicking this shape that we made with our wave, right? It kind of mimicked this in some ways. It kind of comes, it it's following this shape. So our shadow is kind of following that shape as well, slightly, if that makes sense. So we're going to kind of come right up underneath where our shadow is and add some of these highlight yellow. 
So about how difficult is this again? I would say this is a three or four. Probably four, I would say. Yeah, probably right. four. That's, that's close to what I guessed. Yeah. I guess 4.173498033. <laughs> you were very close, honey. And Marty guessed the same as I did, strangely. Did strangely. Yeah. <laughs> What are the odds of that? <laughs> okay. I'm going to go um, in these light troughs, so the light areas here, and uh, create some of these shapes in here. Still kind of working in these lines. You can kind of see these vague lines that I'm creating. So kind of working them. Still working these lines in, but now I'm kind of trying to catch these highlight areas. Very small brush strokes. Don't have a whole lot of paint on my brush either, so these are very kind of almost dry brushed brush strokes. I'm just trying to create some subtle highlights in the water. And now you can see why we needed all of that dark underneath, because otherwise it just wouldn't look like anything. If we don't have it dark enough underneath. All right, let's create some lines this way. And these ones are going to kind of come in this direction. So I'm going to kind of create Tapping and every now and then I'm kind of just tapping and then sometimes sweeping side to side. So tap, sweep, tap, sweep, tap, tap, sweep. So that way you can kind of get this randomness that we're looking for. Tap, 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 sweep, sweep, sweep. Always kind of changing it up. All right, let's put some of this bright white yellow in our wave especially right up in here maybe a little bit more green than that Fish. nope that was a cat a little bit of the yellow and Thalo green and lightly kind of curving it down this way, so sweeping down this way. Like that. Then there is some light color. Happening on the top of this wave. Also, just a little bit. And then let's put some of it up in here too. Oops, it's off there. You want me to get you a snack or anything? Maybe. Um, I have crackers right here. It's going to be really loud, though. Are you going to share? Yeah, I'll share my crackers with you. I'll open it for you. Thank you keep you. painting. Okay. All right, grabbing some of the turquoise and mixing that with my yellow green, and I still had that yellow and white in my brush, so we're all making a nice big... Party of colors here. We'll kind of create thank you. And you even got cute little clippy, I know. 
That's how I cl close my bags with chips. Okay, just kind of creating this transition between that dark color that we had in between before and that green, that new green that we've got in there now. Zoom out a little bit, I'm going off camera. All right, let's use some of this color in our waves that are real close up in here. So we're still going to have a little bit of highlights on here, but they're going to be a little bit darker. So this is that darker turquoise green that I was just using in the wave. it a little bit in this area. Just creating some movement in our shadow area there. All right, then I'm going to grab some of my bright cadmium yellow light. Mix that with that green. I want a really bright lime green color here. I'm going to add a little bit of it just a couple places on this where that light is peeking through, breaking through this shadow area. And anywhere we create these kind of V shapes like this, it'll make that wave look like it's coming up to a point. So. Let's do a little bit right in here too. And I'm going to transition these two colors down into my shadow. This is actually going to be a little bit different than in my picture here. So I want, there's dark here and then it kind of gets lighter up here underneath where that wave crests. So I want to create that kind of transition right there where it's kind of coming down. And this part's sort of rolling up into this wave that's coming down over the top of it. Grab a little bit more of that bright color and come back this way. I'm angling it this way, so all my brush strokes are kind of gently angled down this, sloping down this way. Okay. I think we're getting there. I 
just want to make sure that we've got enough of this bright glow in here. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of this white and cadmium yellow and create some really bright area right up in here. And then there's kind of a highlight that's going to happen right here is where it rolls down. So we're just going to kind of pull almost straight down right there. And then there's another little bit of that bright yellow peeking through in here. Let's grab phthalo blue. We'll use a little bit of that burnt sienna. Create that dark turquoisey blue. I'm going to use that in here to create some really dark shadows. And come up right up underneath some of these highlighted areas create some shadows and if it's going on too dark you can add a little bit of the glazing liquid to soften it up just a little bit where it's cresting, pulling down, and a little bit right down in here where it's going down into that dark blue. And this is where you can kind of go back in now with this color. And if we get any of these highlights that were too bright, you can kind of tone them down with a little bit of this color or really any of your blues. Whoops. Brush I'm trying to jump out of my hand there. Let's soften up that transition there. create some deeper shadows in between some of these ridges here. It's only an hour. Wow, we've gotten a lot done in an hour. That's it's coming along a lot faster than I thought it would. It's not been too bad. I know. I've been working my butt off over here. Have you? <laughs> all that chatting, hurting your finger. You can finger cramps from all the typing. When's my break time? <laughs> I'm going to have a cracker. Mute me. You can. This is me talking during the eating portion of the video. Now, no, they can't even hear you tapping, tapping, swiping, swiping.
It's kind of weird. <clears throat> well, maybe we should get you one of these mics. Because there's like no background noise. No. Okay, you're back. Are you still crunching? <laughs> okay, I turned you off. Hey, <laughs> thanks for joining. <laughs> we got 32 viewers right now. Nice. I know. We're setting some records here. For a live Patreon, and you're back. All right, sorry, I took some ibuprofen for my arm, so I had to take a have a cracker there. <laughs> <laughs> we're having some tendonitis problems, but we're working through it. All right, yeah, I'm liking that. Looking pretty good. Okay, so now we need to work on some sea foam because we want to have some of that. Uh, all these kind of interesting sea foam things. We've got kind of our basic waves going on underneath. So we'll add some of the sea foam shapes. And I think I'm going to go ahead and switch to a smaller brush for that. Let's, uh, let me see. Let's, let's try this one. This is our number one round. All right, so... Let's start with, why well, I haven't used my unbleached titanium yet. I don't know if I'm going to need it. We'll see. I haven't used the quinacridone magenta either. Um, actually, speaking of that, I did want to add a little bit of that before I start on this. Maybe a little bit of quinacridone. with my phthalo blue. Creates kind of a violet. Add some white. I'm going to use that right in here. There's some kind of pink colored highlights in the water right in here. So right along that edge between the highlight and the shadow area. Add some of this color in. You can also add it back in here. And then I'm also going to add it up in our sky. So now that this is dry, I can touch in. It might be a little bit too bright. Let me add a little bit of the glazing liquid here. I'm just going to darken up the underneath of some of these clouds. So I'm picking these ones that are a little bit deeper color and adding this purple glaze. And if it's going on too obvious or you don't really like it, you can leave this part out or you can go back in and take a damp brush and kind of blend through it to soften it up. snoring in the over there. <clears throat> You're not using the big brush? No, I'm just using my small filbert here. Mm, I can see. 
see that. Okay, adding a little bit darker color to the underside of some of these clouds. Just tapping in the glazing liquid. Use my finger to soften it up a little bit. And then I'm going to use some of that. Let me see. I guess I'll use the phthalo blue. A little bit of the phthalo blue with the glazing liquid. A lot of glazing liquid. <coughs> okay, got a question. Very little of this phthalo blue, and I wiped most of it off my brush, so I'm just going to very lightly come up here in the corners. Yes, well, go ahead. Another question was, is the uh, painting going to get darker to be more like a sunset painting like the reference photo? Um, like in the sky? Well, like it looks like the reference photo is a little more orangey. Oh, yeah, you can... Um, you well, we're still going to add some more highlights to it, but this is about as dark as it's going to get in this area here. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay, I'm with you. Was that your question or their question? Their question. Oh. Okay. I wouldn't dare ask a question like that. <laughs> Just wondering. I am lightening up a little bit. That's a good question, though. Yeah, I am lightening up a little bit because I felt like there was... Uh, it was hard to tell what was happening in here to me. It was a lot of way, a lot of splash and not a lot of form. So, um, yeah, I'm ch I changed it up a little bit. I might darken up this areas down in here a little bit uh, later, but um, for the most part, we're, we're about as dark as it's going to get down in here. Might go a little bit darker, but not much. Okay, I'm not loving this blue up here. I should have put it in when I was putting it in the sky instead of putting it on afterwards. But too late now. Just go with it. And some of that dark blue in on the corners there. Cleaning out my brush. Mm, using that soft wet down brush to kind of soften that edge between the two. hit up the tops of some of these clouds with this brighter yellow This is pretty much just white right here. It's adding this to the tops of some of these clouds to create a bright kind of halo effect that you get when that light is shining and catching on the tops of them. I'm dragging my brush side to side a little bit to create some kind of wispy shapes. Really, you could do this with your stippler too if you wanted, but these these clouds are a little bit smaller and kind of a little bit more, um, I don't know, regularly shaped. 
So that's why I'm using this instead of my stippler. Kind of draw in these shapes a little bit easier. Plus it kind of mimics the color, the shapes that are happening in the waves too. By using the same brush, you kind of get a, um, so I you unifies the painting a little bit even just using the same brush. But you get a kind of a similar brush stroke out of it. Okay. All right, I'm liking that better, just kind of softening up that a little bit with the blending in that sky. A little bit more, okay. So let's add this white yellow color to a little bit of this right here. Just real bright right there. And then a little bit right here. Maybe a tiny bit right in here. Okay, and let's keep on using this color. Down here. I'm gonna create some of these little foam. I started with this bigger brush and then I'll work to the smaller one here in a minute. This is working for me right now, so go ahead and zoom in right here on this part. I'll try to stay on kind of camera. Okay. Good. All right. So I'll try to watch the video. Thank you. So I try. No, oh, well, you're only doing like 12 different things in there, so I understand. <laughs> Okay. And I'm off. You didn't try very long. I'm sitting there watching and you're doing okay. And I look down to make sure nothing's coming up in chat. And then you're like, <laughs> oh, I'm off. I'm like, Seriously? It's like, you must be watching when I... <laughs> now. Yes. Hurry, you better do it quick before he sees it. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, so let's grab some Della Blue and my white. Some of these are going to be a little bit more blue. Some of these, especially in here, this foam is kind of this blue color. So I'm going to create little random shapes. Just tapping my brush. I don't want to lose all this dark area here, so I'm just kind of being careful where I'm doing this. There's some foam going right up into this wave here. So I'm going to bring it all the way up into here. Mm, let's tap in some foam right in there. Here again, I'm kind of creating these lines. I'm still doing that. These ones are pointing this way, and these ones are pointing this way. So we're all kind of pointing 
up in here. These ones in the middle are kind of creating this sort of bowl shape and then they're being sucked up into this wave. So as we get over here, they're kind of going to be in these lines again, sort of. And most of this is going to have, you know, some sort of a sea spray happening over the top, but these this this foam should really add a lot of realism to to it. Okay. And then as we get down lower here, the sea foam starts to turn um well, this stuff down in here is still blue. So we'll do some blue foam. Down here I need to see it. There we go. It kind of creates these like string um, connected strings. I don't know how else to describe it. Okay. Switch to that smaller brush now. <clears throat> and I'm going to use the cadmium yellow light to spray my paint. It's starting to get dry. Use that cadmium yellow light. And I have to put out some fresh paint. It's starting to get sticky. Some white. All right, put it this way. Foot rest is making noises there, sorry. Mm -hmm. Actually, let's get the cadmium medium here. I think I want it a little bit deeper color. Alright, so I'm going to start right in here where this transition is happening right there and start creating some of these sea foam shapes. Just wiggling my brush side to side here. I'm really just kind of looking at my picture now to see what these shapes are, what shapes I'm seeing here. Some kind of a connected dots and wiggly lines. I don't know if that's... Make sense there? Okay. And as I get over here, I'm going to change the direction a little bit. Put a little bit of this color up in here. 
maybe some of these are catching a little bit of that color too. Just touching very, very lightly on a couple of these that are up in that shadow area. I don't want to get those really bright, but I do want a little bit of this color in there. <clears throat> okay. And then right along here, there's some kind of like this wave sort of breaking right here, so. And now as I'm coming this way, they're going to be pointing this way. These ones were kind of coming this direction. These ones in the middle were kind of coming straight down at us almost. And then as I'm going on this side, I'm going to kind of change the direction of them a little bit. And have them kind of leading up in this direction towards the wave. Getting pulled into the middle. If we get these too dark, we can always go back in and tone them down. So I'm just going to go ahead and put them in bright for now, and we can always change it up a little bit, change the color slightly if we need to. quite a bit of it along these or maybe it's just the highlights I'm seeing but we'll go ahead and add some more bright areas here some of this right up into those waves. Okay. Go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. Just in a few places, so I'm going to tap in. Tap in some white. It's a little bit thinned out with some water. It still has a little bit of that yellow in my brush, too. But I'm going to tap in some white in on top of some of this foam here. Brighten it up in a couple places. And it's got like holes through it. 
So, you know, that foam has got the bubbles and things happening. So there, it's not like a solid color. There's all this kind of dark and light things happening in this foam. So just try to kind of replicate that by tapping in some of this white over the top. It'll create some layering. And add some of this brighter white right in here. Right kind of where that sun is going to be brightest. It's going to go over the top of that wave and we're going to get a nice bright highlight right here in our water. Just kind of wiggling as I paint here. I'm not really pressing down too hard with this brush. I'm really letting it kind of just create whatever shapes it, it wants to as it's catching the canvas. I'm holding it very far back normally, you know, than I normally do so that I'm getting more organic shapes out of it. Really good way of keeping your brush strokes light and less uh, rigid, I guess. Right. Not a lot of the white back there. There's just mostly just right in there in the middle part. So I'm just going to do it right there. Bring some of that foam down in here. Okay. So is your arm going to be good for churning butter later on? <laughs> All that butter we... <laughs> no. <laughs> no? <not>. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Vacuuming? I'm going to tighten this down, actually. So here, this is the foam. So let's start in our seafoam spray. I'm going to use Ultramarine Blue. I grabbed that Thalo Blue on accident there. I mean, I want an Ultramarine Blue. And uh, let's go ahead and use this Unbleached Titanium to start with. Here we go. And I've got my fan brush here. And I'm going to start. creating some of my wave. Shadows, so the waves are going to be, this is wiggling too much. You see how it's wiggling every time I touch it. I'm gonna have to switch brushes here. Or put some tape on it or something. Sorry, fan brush. You yeah. just couldn't hack it. Fan brush, you let me down. Big opportunity <laughs> and just. <laughs> There's a starry moment. Been yeah. benched. I messed it up. Yep, yeah, it's been benched. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of water to this paint so it comes off my brush a little bit. I don't want my brush getting a lot. I just dipped the very tip of it in water because I don't. These. Uh, Hog bristle brushes can get uh, real floppy if you add too much water to them. So I'm just, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to kind of create the shape of my waves now. And putting this color right kind of at the bottom of where I want the white parts of the waves to be. This one kind of came up and over right here. I 
And then this one looking like this. And just kind of crest it at the top here and started rolling down right up here. Okay, grab some white. Add that to that blue. Little tiny bit of water. Alright, I'm going to tap. I'm going to use the corner. Gives me a little bit more control. I'm going to tap. And as I tap, I'm kind of doing a circular motion. So I'm not tapping straight down. I'm going to go kind of on top of that blue. And I'm going to pull on this just slightly down. It needs to be it needs to be close enough to this color that it's uh, not going to be too weird looking. We will have white in here, trust me. We're just doing this, some blues first. So, really important to have some of this blue in here. At least on this one. This wave has got a lot of blue in the... I'm going to pull down here this way. Slightly get some streaking happening over the top of that dark right there. And... over the top of that dark. <clears throat> okay, grabbing some more of the white. And go right up in here to really bright white. Pull some of it down just slightly, just so that it looks like it's kind of coming down, skimming down the top of that wave. So pull down very gently, get a little bit of that rolling wave motion. Do the same thing right here. So these are kind of coming in, this one's curving this way a little bit, and this one's curving this way a little bit. Just set it down and kind of pull. If you did the whale tail, you kind of, it's that kind of same feeling of how we did that one. Okay. Tapping in with this bright white now along that edge. Don't want to do too much too soon because I don't want to lose all my dark shadows so I'm kind of really slowly building these layers up. There's going to be some really bright white right in here where it's coming up over the top right there. And then there's some foam happening down here where it's already kind of crashed down, maybe being sucked up into that. A 
I'm liking that. I'm good. Let's put a little bit of this right in here. There's that little kind of back wave that's kind of crested right here. And I think I'm going to pull some sideways. switch to my, I'm going to go ahead and grab that fan brush again, give it another shot, and do some, well, now actually, I'm going to do, I'll use my toothbrush here, grab some, you having crackers? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we didn't eat before we started this, but. all right, we're almost done, I think, so I'm going to use my toothbrush here, wet down my white paint, I'm going to point it straight down. I, I like the toothbrush because I can get a little bit more control than the fan brush sometimes. So I'm going to use that and point it straight down real close to the canvas. And if I get it real close to it, it'll end up getting some string, string-like uh, looking splatters, which I want. And get it super close. You can see how close I'm getting it to the canvas here. It, I think I'm gonna use use a large flat uh, number six bright here and some of that turquoise in my glazing liquid maybe a little bit of the green they look green with it and I'm just going to kind of run over doesn't have to be all over, but just a few of these areas. And this will kind of set back those highlights. Make them look a little bit more part of the painting. Just like running over and glazing some of these colors. Let's add some really dark that ultramarine blue. Add some of that down in here. <coughs> Punch up some of these shadow areas. <clears throat> ultramarine blue with the glazing liquid here. Yeah, I'm liking that. All right, and I think I want a little bit of this, maybe a little bit of the phthalo blue. Right up here on the top of my wave here. Maybe a little bit of it right in here. Make sure your shadows and everything are, or your dots are all dry before you do this, otherwise you can lift them off. But just adding a little bit of that brighter blue I'm going to add it down in here too. And some of the under parts of my water. See how pretty that makes it?
use a little tiny bit of that orange color that was up in our sky to just a little cadmium red and cadmium yellow, a little bit of my white. Because we want all of these sky colors to be down here in our water, so we haven't added that color yet. So we just add a little bit of that color right along in here. Maybe a little bit of it on the tops of some of our waves here. Just a little bit of that orangey color. Maybe a little bit more yellow. And this is just kind of glazing. I don't have a lot of solid paint on my brush, so it's kind of just see-through at this point. Adding a little bit of this color in some of our wave. Oh, you got a question. Yes. Kim would like to know, how do you know when to use thalo blue and when to use ultramarine? Um, when I want, um, ultramarine blue is, is kind of one of my more favorite shadow colors. So when I know I'm going for like a, you know, really, um, dark shadow, like down in here and real close up in here, I'm using the ultramarine. But when I want a little bit brighter shadow color or a little bit, you know, brighter blue, uh, a little bit more greenish tone, then I'm using the thala blue. So, um, you know, kind of depends on where. I'm using it what I need it for, um, but yeah. All right, adding a little bit of... Also, when you're out of cad blue, it's about right. your only option you have. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm gonna get some more of the bright titanium white here now that I've got some of that orange. Color and actually meant to put some down here, but I ended up in my waves. Let me do it right here. It's a little bit of this orangey color right in here. If you look at our picture, it really is seems weird to use that orange color, but if you looked if you looked really close in here, there's orange right here, there's orange right here. There's a lot of orange right in here. All of these little bits are picking up the colors from the sky and reflecting it. And the water does that really well. So doing, you know, doing some of these other weirder, you know, colors that are not blue but that are in the sky will again kind of pull that sky Reflection down, make it look a little bit more realistic too. So, but we're almost done here. Grab some of this ultramarine blue and tap in underneath some of these waves. And underneath some of my foam, especially down in here. This foam down here will have some shadows happening, so if we kind of come up right up underneath that light color and add a little bit of this darker blue, it will make them look more realistic. You don't have to do all of them, but just the major ones that are kind of right in front here to really help give them a little shadow. So I was tapping some of that darker color up underneath the foam.
fourth layer of white. And I think I'm going to use, use my round brush for it. Grab that bright white, make sure my brush is nice and clean so this is nice and bright. And I'm going to tap in some random sea foam spray. Really, this is a wave spray. Coming down. So, is the uh, wave part of the sea? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But it has its own spray. Well, this is kind of wave spray and then foam spray. The sea foam spray is down here. You know, oh, the, okay. Get some of that white back in down here. Ultramarine blue. Just adding little touches. Now just kind of trying to see where I might put too much white, kind of toning it down a little bit. So this white, really this area, I'm kind of fudging a little bit because it's is not as white in my picture. It's really pretty much just dark blue, but it, so I might need to darken that up because really the white part's only at the top where the light is catching it. But since I changed my wave up quite a bit, I'm kind of trying to figure out where it would be in my picture here. It's it's white down in here, but the sun is probably pointing this way on it. So just trying to I think I want my fan brush in. It's been sitting in the water, so it's all floppy. So we'll see if we can get it to do what we want it to do. There we go. We'll put some of this darker color down in here. There we go. That's better. Since our light's coming from behind, it really needs to be darker down low. There it is. Just stuck my hand in my water for no reason. <laughs> Trying to find it. It's sitting right there the whole time.
Actually, let's do a little bit of blue this time so that they're a little bit softer. Not quite that bright, bright white. Grabbing a little bit of that ultramarine blue color. Tap that off. And then we'll use it, pointing it straight down here. Again, part of the early splatter move movement. Yes, we gotta have splatters. <laughs> so now there's two things that you think about when you look at things to paint. One, what does it look like with a flower on it? Right. And two, can I splatter it? Can I splatter it? Right. <laughs> How much splattering will this be able to <laughs> do? low ones I don't mind, but these ones way up high here I probably don't want. <laughs> okay, there we go. Alright, I still feel like I want some more white splatters. So we're just going to keep on going until it's, I'm happy with it. It's pretty much how it goes with, at this point, I probably what would I would do I had the time and you probably don't want to sit there and just look at it with me but I would sit and look at it for a little while um, contemplate it check it out look at the original picture see if there's anything I missed um, and then you know going back in and make any changes that I'd want to make but we don't have that luxury today so we're just going to kind of still feel like I want a little bit of something happening in some of these waves. They just look a little bit too perfect. So I'm going to try to break up that edge a little bit. can't get this kind of random uh, look with the brush. It's just just so they can see the amount of splatter and okay. and how that's broken up like that. Yeah. It's a giant hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's good. I think I want you really really want <laughs> a 
Well, I can't do it too much because it's still wet here, but I go back in and shadow again just that bottom edge of the, some of these so that they look a little bit more blue down here. Really, ideally, wait for this to dry so you don't lift off any of your color here. But I'm just adding a little bit of this thalo blue up underneath that spray. That just sets it down in, gives it a little shadow underneath, makes it look like it's part of the wave and not just kind of setting out there on top. So, which it is, but you still do want it to add a little bit of that dark on top. Okay, I think I'm going to stop fussing with it. I, I like it. I could keep fussing with it for a couple more hours probably, but I'm going to call it good. So, yeah. I like it. Um, yeah, I think that's good. I was going to say I could add a little bit more white to the to the sun, but I think it's bright enough, so you get the idea. All right, guys, thanks so much. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you try this and uh, share your results with me. You can share them on Facebook or on the Patreon page there. Uh, and uh, we will be back on Tuesday with a finger painting lesson. Be doing uh, a nest with finger paints. So, oh, we need to give her, we'll give her a wave. How's that? This is our... The goddess of sticks. She's going to She's got lightning wave. coming from her head. And she's got a wave. I know. She's... Commanding the waters. Mm-hmm. With an apple and a flower. Don't mess with stick girl. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> she's got her... Got herself a wave here with her waterfall. That's a pretty weak wave, but that's okay. <laughs> These are just for fun, so. That's all right. <laughs> all right, I'm going to. I'll grab my pen here and sign it real quick. It's dry down here. Come come up a finger's width so that it doesn't uh, cover up if I frame it. There we go. All right, you guys, know, thanks so much. I think we're going to uh, have our own line of spacers that look like your finger. So everybody knows, like, a finger <laughs> so, space. Yeah, okay. Two finger space. <laughs> I'm on to something here. Nice. I'm sure okay. we'll sell millions. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.